Hello and welcome to another class of ABM Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today I'll be talking about antibodies. So this is a very important component of immune system which neutralizes the pathogens. But we know that we have in our body five antibodies. That is IgA, Ig, D, IgE. IgM and IgG. So these five types of antibodies we possess in our body uh, as a part of the immune system and this is also called adaptive immune system because after the immune system it activates a few times and it takes some times to produce the antibodies. So here we'll be talking about IgM and IgG. As you know IgA is the secretory antibody IgD is mainly present on the membranes of the B cells. IgE is responsible for allergic response. So I'm not going in detail about those antibodies. Or if you insist, I can go later in my classes. But today, why IgM and IgE is chosen here? Because these two antibodies are very, very crucial if you suspect any kind of disease. Because when you're going to ELISA, that is immune uh, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, to detect a pathogen so you have to go for either the detection of antibody or the detection of the antigen for the particular pathogen so that time you will be uh, taking help of this IgM and IgG test to know whether the pathogen is inside you or you are infected by the particular pathogen or not so the responses of these two antibodies varies so suppose one pathogen infects you at the first place okay so suppose uh, I have to give you an example so you can understand properly. So I'll be telling you suppose a dengue virus. So it's a part of a flabby virus. It's a RNA virus. So it's a very common problem in India as well as in the world. So suppose you have to diagnose dengue whether the person is infected with uh, dengue or not. So what you will be testing? So there are three types of tests for dengue. That is NS1, IgM, IgG. These three things you can test to confirm the person is having the dengue or not. So NS1 is comes first in the role that is uh, a non-structural protein inside the virus. So this you have to detect within five days that is less than five days after the onset of illness. Okay. So now after five days, you can detect the antigen because the virus is present inside you. So that's why you have to go for the antigen test with the help of uh, other antibody that is present in the patient's sera. Now, if you're detecting the IgM antibody that is produced against this NS1 antigen, then you have to take the help of IgM or IgG. So why I'm calling about IgM? Because this is the primary, primary antibody raised against any type of pathogen. So this is the first response of the immune system against a particular pathogen. It may be a virus, it may be bacteria. So here I am suspecting about DENF, that is dengue virus. So the IgM will be response first. So you'll be detecting IgM through this ELISA kit, particular from any company, which is a very standard uh, nowadays. So this IgM, which is first response against the particular antigen, it, their peak will differ from IgG because, so I will draw a picture or a graph so that you can understand it properly. So suppose, these are the number of days, suppose five, seven, dot, 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 I'm not going in detail. That is 90 days and that is suppose 365 days. So number of days. And this is sensitivity, okay? So suppose this is 25%, 50%, 75% and 100%. So this is the level of sensitivity against the virus and 
this is the number of days where the response will be there. So this is the response of dengue virus, the viral antigen. Now I'll draw the NS1 which will be decreasing. Okay. Now I'll draw IgM which will be starting the response from here. Now I'll draw the IgG which will be starting from here. So in case of primary infection, so there are two types of infection that can uh, happen inside a uh, human being normally. That is a primary, when it is a primary infection that means when the person is infected with a particular antigen or the pathogen for the first time that is primary infection okay so this primary infection during the primary infection the response of the antibody that is so the red one is the virus the black one is ns1 the blue one is IgG and the green one is IgM. Okay, so the level you can see here that the red one, the virus levels, when it is first at the day zero and it is 100 percent or near the 100 percent inside the human body or the particular patient's body, that time the raising of IgM is slow response and after the five days it reaches the highest peak okay so it reaches the highest peak that time the first as I said the IgM response is very much faster compared to the IgG when it is a primary infection so after the five days it is at peak level and after that it may be detected up to 90 days okay in case of primary infection so after the virus levels are going down that time the IgG antibody will be produced which will be kept in memory for further secondary infection so that just started when the viral titer is going down and afterwards it started to increase the levels of IgG and at 90 days you can see after 90 days levels when the IgM levels are almost down that time the Ig levels are going high. So whenever if you suspect a patient or you are, if you check a patient that the IgM levels are low and the uh, detected by the RT-PCR, that time you can suspect a secondary infection or it may be a cross reaction of the nearby infection of any kind of flavivirus. So in case of primary infection, uh, I think it's clear that the response will be IgM faster and the peak level will be after the five days where it will rise to a highest level and then it can maybe detect up 90 days and then you go down maybe it will disappear from the blood and then the Ig response will be higher after a few days maybe sometimes two weeks sometimes after uh, 7 to 10 days from the symptoms and then it will be detected till several days okay so this is the kind of primary infection now i'll be going to secondary infection so you may have noticed that i've drawn this igm that started from here it always lower in tighter than the viral infection during the secondary infection. So I should write here, this is the secondary infection. So during secondary infection, the response of IgM is much more lower, but you can see that the IgG levels are much higher and it started we can see the sensitivity is much higher compared to the primary infection if you remember that one 
that uh, it started from here after seven days or when the title of the virus was going down but here in the secondary infection it started from highly sensitive way and in a peak level that is very fast response and very drastic response compared to the primary infection so in that time when you're comparing comparing the igg or igm it may cross react with other viruses of such kind suppose here i am discussing about dengue virus so it's a flavi virus so the group of flavi virus family viruses which may cross react with this kind of igg and igm response during the secondary infection so during clinical diagnosis of these viruses on kind of pathogen which gives this such critical response of igm and ieg that time you have to remind that if the person is uh, first time infected or acute infection the first infection that time the igm will be the preferred choice and igg levels will be detected much more later after 15 days or 10 days maybe after the uh, onset of symptoms and then in case of secondary infections, the IgM levels may be detected much more lower. It may or it may not be detectable sometimes, depending upon the person's immunity. But that time the IgG levels are much more higher. So you have to interpret the results likewise, and you have to understand that is the person is infected for the first time or it is for the second time. So IgM is a pentavalent antibody and is larger in size and is much more uh, drastic response. It can bind several. Uh, antigens at the same time so it's a primary response of our immune system and IgG is, a, uh, is also a very crucial uh, factor for memory antibody response for the future uh, response against the viral antigens so or any bacteria antigens so this is the part of IgM and IgG and it's a very important thing you should remember why it is so important for the clinical aspect the IgM and IgG concept so I hope I'm clear. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section. Uh, thank you very much.